Welcome to the Washington Examiner's post-debate analysis. I'm Chris Irvin, the managing editor. I'm joined here by Mabinti Korshi, the uh, our national politics correspondent. And uh, well, wow, <laughs> that was a complete train wreck, wasn't it? Where do we where do we start? I mean, we have to start with the issue that everyone's talking about. Biden. This was a car crash for him. This was supposed to be his reset. This was supposed to jolt the campaign. It didn't do that at all. He came out of the gate looking, he sounded hoarse, weak. He looked confused. He stumbled over questions. It was hard to hear him at times. These are all playing into the stereotypes that people already have. And I shouldn't even say stereotypes because they're not at this point. These are playing into the fears that people have about Biden where, you know, can he even last another four years? And tonight it did not look like he could do that. And, you know, Trump, the split screen between Trump and Biden was brutal for Biden because Trump came off sharp, clear headed. He didn't have that much, you know, stumbling in his responses. In fact, some of his responses to Biden just called him out for being like, I don't understand what he said. Yeah. And, you know, Trump is right next. He's, you know, right next to him. And even he couldn't understand what he was saying. So how are we as the audience supposed to understand what Biden is saying? And again, this comes about a month and a half before the DNC convention. And if Democrats weren't panicking before now, they're absolutely panicking at this very moment. The thing that struck me in particular about uh, Trump's performance was Biden clearly had some pre-written lines that he was going to, uh, you know, volley at him of having sex with a porn star, being kind of the one that sticks out and the uh, the losers and suckers line. And, and Trump just easily... Uh, batted away every single one. Um, it what, and I don't even know if Trump necessarily had his A game, but I don't think he needed to bring his A game tonight. And Biden was just all over the place, as you say, right from the very start. And the immediate post mortem, uh, we were all watching CNN in the uh, in, in in the newsroom, and I have never seen CNN correspondents so bereft and so upset with the democratic performance. The, it, it, David Axelrod even said, it raised the prospect of Biden being replaced on the ticket. I mean, yeah, again, remember, this is the earliest debate in like US presidential history. This was supposed to show that Biden, you know, was strong and energetic, you know, reminiscent of his State of the Union speech. This was the complete opposite of that. And now, you know, you have the American audience, apparently 70% of people were supposed to tune in to this debate. This is not a good look. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just not. <laughs> and so now there are going to be a lot of questions about should he be replaced at the DNC convention? And if so, what does that look like? Because his VP, Kamala Harris, is not that popular. Yeah. So, you know, replacing him with her, I don't know if that actually solves the Democratic problem that's happening right now. Yeah, I mean... That's one thing. From the debate itself tonight, if we, if we focus on that, do you think there was any actual substance that came from it? Everybody is obviously going to remember this as one of the worst debate performances of all time, certainly in the modern era. But did you come away with anything, think, any policy that you'll think, oh, I, I'll, I'll vote for either of those men on those policies? Was there anything that struck a chord with you? No. And in fact... It felt like a rehash of what Biden and Trump have been saying on the campaign, you know, rallies when they when they talk to voters. I'm like after this debate, I'm not even sure voters care about the policy as, as more of them being concerned that should we give Biden another four years? I know they got into spats about, you know, Ukraine and Russia. But again, Trump has been saying that, you know, Biden is Biden's weakness is part of the reason that Putin invaded Ukraine because he didn't feel like he'd have consequences from America. But that's not new. You know, they got into spats over abortion. But again, Trump has been saying since Roe got struck down that it should be left to the states. He's been trying to get the party, you know, to back away from federal abortion rights because that might not be the best or the most electorally popular issue. And so, yes, it was there was some policy conversations. I just don't know how much voters are going to care at this point because it was such a disastrous performance. Uh, most importantly, the uh, the fact check that everybody cares about, do you think that Joe Biden has a golf handicap of six? I don't know sports. Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I think um, it's going to be absolutely fascinating to see what the fallout is in the coming days. Um, do you think Democrats will move quickly uh, or do you think they're going to have to ride this out at least until the convention? Or, or even through to November and just take their lumps. 
I think we ride this out to the convention. I definitely think we're going to see a whole lot more reporting of, of Democrats anonymously calling for Biden to be removed, especially because, as you pointed out, on CNN, they're already talking about it, you know, the pundits. And, and, you know, even as the debate was going on, I was getting text messages from strategists, you know, basically saying the, the bar was low for Biden and he couldn't clear that. Yeah. And if you can't clear that in June, how are you going to last until November? Indeed. All right, Mavinti. Well, thanks very much. I know you've got a lot more work to do tonight.